Well, nothing like enjoying classic American burgers and hot dogs with your classic Mexican-American family. And don't forget about your classic American drink. Mm. Does Mexico also have an Independence Day too? Yeah, I think it's uh, Cinco de Mayo. No, stupid. It's like Dia de los Muertos. Dia no? de los Muertos? Wait. You're right. It's like an animal, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You call yourselves Mexicanos? I'm Ocosos. You know nothing of your history. The reason we call ourselves Mexicanos is because our people, your ancestors, fought for that right a long time ago. Oh. Gather around and hold on to your pepinos, because I'm taking you for a ride. A ride through history. What up, chicos and chicas? If you're anything like those kids, it means that you're probably Mexican-American, but don't know anything about Mexican history, much less Mexican independence history. That's okay, because we're here to present to you Mexican, Mexican independence, independence history, history for pendejos. pendejos! Pendejos! No, 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 no. Kids are watching, so it's, it's tontos. Mexican, Mexican independence history for pendejos! pendejos. Oh. Mugrosos! For pendejos! Oh my. Is that the only word you know? For esquicles! Mexican independence history for tontos! The Mexican independence war was an 11 year war between Mexico or Spanish America and the Spanish Empire between 1811 and 1821. But before the war started, Spain had their hands tied with a lot of problems back home. In Spain, the Spanish Empire was dealing with a little problem called Napoleon. The main issue with this guy was... What European countries would you like to take over? I want them all! At first, Spain was cool with Napoleon until he betrayed them, sent troops and seized power. He eventually threw King Ferdinand VII, Spain's king, into jail, causing a government shift. By the time Napoleon was taken down and Ferdinand let out of jail, Spain already established its own constitution, the Constitution of Cadiz of 1812, which basically abolished the monarchy and gave more to the power of the people. But then Ferdinand returned and said, This ain't it, chief. And restored the power back to the monarchy. This then led to revolts and revolution. So while Spain was dealing with their ex Ferdinand, their side chick of Mexico was complaining about not getting enough attention. Because back in Mexico, they were also getting their fair share of political struggles, power struggles, and racial struggles within the Spanish rule. Racial struggles? Aren't they all Mexican? Not really. Spain had control over Mexico for so long that it actually created a new social hierarchy. The king's on top, running both countries, putting saladas under, chosen by the king. Creoles come in, basically Caucasians, bro, mestizos, biracial from Indians and the white Creole. Pilatos are black and white, no MJ, natives are lash, but it's their country anyway. What, bitch? The Creoles were getting angsty because of Spanish inconsistency, and the mestizos and natives were pretty much tired of everything. Crappy government, racial problems, political problems. After all that, there's only one thing left to do. A REVOLUTION! And now, your starting lineup for the Mexican Revolution! At door, Jose Maria Moreros! At forward, Vicente Guerrero! At forward, Mariano Matamoros! And the man in the So Padre Hidalgo was over here chilling with the Holy Spirit one day when he found out that some Crioles were trying to overthrow the local Spanish rule. Hey, uh, uh, can I join? Sure. <laughs> Be 
Because Hidalgo was a scholar and so well spoken, he became the main voice of the movement. I can talk really loud and I can sound really, really smart and I can do it for hours. He would give speeches and recruit people for the fight of independence. But he would talk about freedom and economics and that was sometimes hard to understand. But he'd still find a way to get people on his side. We need financial stability and independence. Freedom! Oh! Eventually, Spanish rule found out what Hidalgo was up to. This then caused him to take action sooner than later. So on September 16, 1810, he rang his church bell, which publicly declared a call to arms for Mexican independence. This was known as El Grito de Dolores, which is what Mexicans celebrate every September 16th. However, we didn't get independence until about 11 years later. But that day was the official kickoff for the war for Mexican independence. Hidalgo and his men got the straps and were off into battle. However, Hidalgo and his men actually had no military training. Like, at all. Hidalgo also recruited a lot of mestizo and native people, and the original Creole-oriented agenda faded away. So Hidalgo left Dolores with 800 men and started heading towards Mexico City, ready to fight. Right away, he recruited Jose Maria Morelos. Put me in, coach! I'm ready! Morelos was just like Hidalgo, and he proved to be a top military leader, where he won every single battle in his first nine months. They were definitely winning, but it did come with a high price. As Hidalgo and his army marched towards the city, his army went from 100,000 men to 40,000. So he needed to take a break and regroup, especially when the Spanish army was already waiting for him in the city. So he went to Guadalajara. There, he did a couple of cool things. He established a new government, freed slaves, gave land back to native people, but he may have killed some innocent peninsulares for no reason. Spanish forces eventually made it to Guadalajara and captured Hidalgo as he was trying to flee. He got executed on July 30th, 1811. It's way. After that, Morelos took over most of the Mexican military. With Hidalgo gone, Morelos needed a right-hand man of his own. Enter Mariano Matamoros. Now this guy was a priest most of his life, but when the revolution started, he sympathized with liberal Creoles. In 1811, some folks were noticing it and sent for him to be arrested. He then fled to Isucar and met Morelos there. Can you fight? Mm. Can you lead? Mm. Go get 2,000 men. Mm. And that's what he did. These guys were unstoppable. Straight up tag team champions. Morelos trusted Matamoros so much, he was like. If I die, you take control of everything. I love you, bro. <laughs> but that didn't last very long. Even though the insurgents were kicking butt, they lost a lot of lives along the way. And the heaviest blow was when they captured Matamoros. The rebel leader and his army got to Valladolid and tried to win the plaza, but his army took a fat ass L. So Matamoros tried to escape, but he got caught in the process trying to cross the river. He was soon tried and sentenced to death. Morelos made a desperate effort to save Matamoros' life by offering 200 Spanish soldiers in exchange for his life. Unfortunately, his proposal got there late and they executed him two days before. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> Morelos kept fighting on, and he even made a name for himself. They even offered him the title of Your Highness, but he refused because he stated, Soy siervo de nación. When Morelos got to Chilpancingo in 1813, he created a new document called Sentimientos de Nación, Sentiments of a Nation. This program ended Spanish rule and created new branches of government. It also abolished slavery, torture, monopolies, and created equality for native-borns. This was basically the first declaration of independence. But after a couple losses in battle, we need this document officialized. Yeah, 
It's a no from me, dog. You can have half plus what we want. Take it or leave it. I guess. Morelos compromised. Gotta do what you gotta do. But as we all know, good things come to an end. And Morelos and his men were eventually defeated and captured in Tesmacala. And Morelos, being the man that he was... Go! Go without me! You can! And you must! Ugh. Then they fucking die. Morelos was tried and then sentenced to death. And with Morelos and Matamoros both gone, there's only one person left to finish the war. Guerrero! The lieutenant of Morelos was raised under the family of Spanish militia. He was the black sheep who believed La Patria Primero, homeland first. Spanish rule is your dream, Dad, not mine! Guerrero proved himself during his time in battle and climbed through the ranks very quickly. He then came toe-to-toe -to -toe with Agustin Iturbide, a Spanish royalist who he tried to convince to join the rebel side instead. Look, you're a smart guy. Spain isn't what it is anymore. Y'all got a king, then y'all don't got a king, then you got a king again. Y'all independent, y'all not. Look, here... We're trying to do things different, better, stronger. So join me. Mm. Come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. Okay. Yes! Iturbide eventually joined them and together they created the army of three guarantees. They then made the Plan of Iguala, which was the first official document declaring Mexican independence from Spain. Of course, it wasn't actually accepted until the Treaty of Cordoba. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me there was no woman involved? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Wait, 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 calmate. I was getting there. Women's contributions in the Mexican independence war are rarely talked about. But not today. Intermission! And now, Despedida, a short skit by Cindy and Norma. Bueno, mija, pues ya me despido otra vez porque tengo una última reunión al ratito y, y no quiero que se me haga tarde. Sí, mija, pues ya ves que el que mucho se despide, pocas ganas tiene de irse. Sí, ya sé. Bueno, pues hasta luego, ¿eh? Cuídate mucho. Ok, mija, cuídate. Eh, saludos a Wally, saludos a, a los chicos. Oye, ¿cómo están tus nietos? Hace tiempo Ay, que preciosos, no... preciosos, que te cuento. Bueno, pero a la otra te cuento más detalles, porque de verdad que ya, ya me tengo que ir. Ya ok, mija. Bueno. Meses. Así es que Chao. Adiós. Chao. Okay. Hasta luego. Chao. Hasta luego. Ahí nos estamos hablando. Sí, mija, bendición. El lunes, ¿verdad? El lunes nos vamos a, a, a cenar o a lonchar. ¿Qué te parece si... Ay, no, vamos a, vamos a cenar. Vamos a, vamos a darnos ese, ese gusto de una rica cena, porque hace mucho que no, que no lo hacemos. ¿Te parece? Así es, perfecto. Okay. ok, mija, entonces el lunes por seguro. Sí. Ok, chao. Nos chao. estamos hablando luego. Okay. Sí. Bye, bye, cuídate. Okay. Bendiciones. Bye. Sí, igualmente. Okay. Oye, saludos a Wally, saludos a Wally. Dime, dime. Se me ha olvidado preguntarte cómo está Vivian. Vivi está bien, gracias a Dios. Todo Amén. bien. Juiciosa como siempre. Qué bueno. Me la saludas mucho, mi hija. Okay. Claro que sí. Bueno, ok. Ahora te bueno. despido. Okay. Hasta luego. Ok. Chao. Bye. Cuídate. Igual. Hasta, Hasta luego. Hasta el lunes. Ok. Bye. Chao. 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 Bye. Bye. Adiós. Chao. Back to your regularly scheduled program. And remember, Latina moms, hang up the phone. And now, your starting lineup for the Women of the Revolution! At guard, Josefa Ortiz de Dominguez! At forward, Gertrudis Bocanegra! At forward, Leona Vicario! The woman in the middle, Maria Luisa Martinez de Garcia Rojas! First we have Josefa Ortiz de Dominguez, aka La Corregidora. Her husband was Miguel Dominguez, who was a vice royal for Spain. Josefa empathized with the Creole and Mestizo community who were oppressed by Spain. 
she eventually became a spy for the rebels, especially when her husband would have all these top secret meetings in their house. Remember earlier when we said that Hidalgo had his plan discovered and had to act quickly? Well guess what, it was actually Josefa who told him the news. Without her, there would be no Grito. Now, let me say that again. Without her, there would be no Grito of Dolores. She got arrested and wasn't released until 1817. She went on to live and join a lot of radical political groups, always fighting for the independence of Mexico. In 1910, she became one of the first women to be depicted on Mexican stamps. Next, we have Boca Negra. Her husband was a soldier in the Spanish army in Michoacan. She then served as a messenger in Pazcuaro and Tacambaro, helping to establish communication networks between both principal locations for the rebellion. She was then sent to Pazcuaro to help the rebels take over the city. However, she got betrayed and was taken by the Royal Army in 1817. She was tortured in order to reveal the names of other rebels, but she told them, I ain't no snitch. She was then finally tried and sentenced death for treason. She was executed on October 11th, 1817 in Pascuela de San Agustin in Pazcuaro. Facing the firing squad, she gave them one last piece of her mind before she was shot. You! Y'all ain't shit. Matter of fact, your dad ain't shit. Your mom ain't shit. Even your granny ain't shit. Come at me, I dare you. She died at the age of 52. They have an erected statue in her honor in Pazcuaro, and she was known as La Heroina de Pazcuaro. Then we have Leona Vicario. Very early, Leona was in contact with the groups that advocated for and eventually began to fight for Mexican independence. She worked with a secret society called Los Guadalupes to basically receive and distribute insurgent messages. She served as a messenger, helped fugitives, sent money and medicine, and basically helped out any way that she could. She fled her home in 1813 because her insurgent activities were discovered. She was captured, but she, like Gertrudis, said, I ain't no snitch. The insurgents rescued her, but the authorities confiscated her property. But luckily, the insurgent congress gave her a pension. After that, she got married and told her boo, Let's bounce. Fled from the authorities together. From 1813 to 1819, her and her boo traveled from one place to another, fighting for the cause for independence, living a life full of sacrifice and poverty. During this time, Leona also collaborated with newspapers such as El Ilustrador Mexicano and Seminario Patriotico Americano. They were discovered in 1817, but received amnesty from the royalists and were able to stay in the city of Toluca until 1820, just one year before Mexico's independence. And finally, Maria Luisa Martinez de Garcia Rojas, a national heroine who actually fought on the forefront of battles during the war. And she was a Native American from Texcoco. She fought with Jose Maria Morelos, but she was not only a soldier in the army, but an officer. She was the first captain in the rebel forces who led her troops into royalist fire and succeeded against the royalist soldiers. The last of her seven battles was in early 1821, when she was wounded twice. But she eventually died from these wounds in 1822, but she died a true hero. So after Guerrero convinced Itorbide, Itorbide went to his army and convinced them to join the rebel forces. Yeah man, he's right man. I don't even know who's in charge anymore, you know? it's I don't know what's happening. And Honestly, I don't know what we're doing here. I don't, don't want to do this anymore. I don't either. The plan of Iguala sounds real good. It does. It sounds real yeah. good. Yeah, let's bounce. Let's bounce. Let's bounce. Let's bounce. Fuck it. Oh, shit. <laughs> On August 24th of 1821, representatives from the Spanish crown, including the new viceroy Juan Odenuhu, and Iturbe got together to sign the Treaty of Cordoba. Who the fuck even is this Yo, guy? Who the is that is fucking this? purple, bro. No, who you the look hell real is fucking this? stupid. Who the hell who is, is this, this Get the bro. fuck out of what, here. What is happening? Goofy Oompa Loompa who are you? looking at. Who are you? The next day, the new Mexican Empire was proclaimed. The Plan of Iguala and the Treaty of Cordoba brought together the insurgents and the royalists. Spain didn't really care much for these treaties. In fact, they actually didn't recognize Mexico's independence until December 28 of 1836, almost 15 years later. When it was all said and done, we had our first Mexican empire, consisting of the army of three guarantees and Iturbide. 
However, alongside new Congress, people wanted to make Hitor be there, the Emperor of Mexico. But those in favor of Congress didn't really care much for that idea. People like Guerrero. So, they duked it out. The OG rebel forces were defeated by Iturbide's army. But soon, the emperor stepped down from power himself and gave the Congress of the People control. You might be wondering if Spain just left Mexico without a fight. Well, they didn't. Technically, Spain tried to reconquer Mexico through their territories in South America. But, due to conflicts happening in actual Spain, they kind of just pulled out and let it be. This led Mexico to grow and develop and prosper and become the Mexico it is today, allowing them to celebrate their culture and independence from September 15th to the 27th, along with Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th. And now, you know a little brief history of the Mexican independence. Whoa! I feel more Mexican, man. Que chido! What? <laughs> hey, look at this! <laughs> wait, 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 so when Mexico became all independent and shit, like, did they live happily ever after?